I apologize for the bad angle, but again, there's not a whole bunch of room in the shop. Sometimes I had people comment that when they do see the shop, they're like, "Whoa, oh, it looks a lot better, bigger in your videos," but uh, it, it's not. It's 12 by 20, and the lift table takes up most of that. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna just roll that belt off the back pulley here. Maybe the tension. The way that this tensions is these arms back here pull the deck to the back of the tractor. We're doing a real good job because it's pulling hard. There's a great big spring in the back there. It's hooked down below. It's got a lot of tension on it. You can get that off by hand, maybe. I should make a spring hook actually. Just a hook with a T handle on it so you can grab a hold of these things and give them a pull. Very strong spring. I use vice grips to get it off. And I think before I put it back on there, I'm going to make that tool that, that I just described a hook, steel hook with a T handle on it. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh. oh, there we go. Oh, I hear stuff falling. Oh, the big giant springs off. It's quite the beast. Well, same size as my vice grips. So that's what pulls the deck to the rear of the tractor and tensions that belt. Yeah, the belt's nice and slack now. That's the electric PTO you're hearing flopping back and forth. Now if I lift the deck it should take some of that even more slack. There we go. Gives us a little less room to access stuff. but. The belt is very slack now. It's off there. We'll lower that deck back down so we can get all the clips off. That belt is off. That one is anyways. There's a stud that comes down right from the top of the, under the engine, and the stud goes all the way down and it uh, locates that PTO so it can't spin around, and it also acts as a retainer for the belt. Keeps the belt from flying off. There we go. Slid it out from underneath that. The belt is rounded in here. It's, it's worn funny. So, we'll put a new one on there. Price of a belt. It gets a new one. It's a resale mower. I don't want the next owner to have any grief. I like my mowers to be in excellent condition when I sell them. I don't want to have, have the customer have trouble or have to put any kind of work or effort into it. You know, shortly after he gets it, of course. I think it'll last a little bit. So the drive belt looks like it will clear under the battery tray and over the cooling fan for the transaxle. Just need to release some of the tension on the, the idler. The pulley in there with a spring pulling it to one side. That's what tensions that belt. I think if I just grab a hold of the nut of that pulley, give it a turn. Maybe. Uh, 
that doesn't seem to want to work. Some tractors actually have a little square on them where you can put a wrench on it and give it a twist and move that idler. I can't get a shot of this, so there's no sense trying with the camera. Yeah, there's not that much tension on it, I just moved it over with my thumb. The belt is now, is now loose. So it should drop down. That pulley is likely very tight on there. I've loosened the main, the big bolt and the crank pulley. It's all, uh, it's all learning. Not every tractor is built the same. MPDs are all built similar, with slight differences over the years. But this is not an MPD. Uh, it is now, but at the time it wasn't. There's a big plate that's holding that up in there. Might need to hold the engine stationary and unscrew this. I don't know. In any case, we can get the deck out. So let's do that. Grab all these cotter pins, pull them out. One there, one there. One there. Pay attention to see if there's any washers on them. That one had a washer. This one does not have a washer. This one does not have a washer. And take that off. Yeah, there's two different ways I can take this back plate off. I'll take the one that's easier to get to, I think. shaft out. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just drop. Pull the whole shaft out to show you when I get that out. It's going to jump over to the other side, take three or four clips out, take the shaft out. I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, I got the counter pins off the other side. The deck's almost ready to come out. The shaft went through here, went all the way through the back. Anyways, all kinds of arms and stuff hanging down on this. <clears throat> Makes it a bit of a pain in the butt to get the deck out, but because they hook themselves in the places where you can't get to. hold all these arms and stuff out of the way while you're sliding this apparatus out. Not a lot of room. I'm just going to take this out and get it off to the side for now. We'll deal with the drive belt first. Then once that's all said and done, Spare parts falling off the top of the deck, hitting the ground. Once that's all said and done, then we'll get into the. I'll get the tractor off the stand and get the, the deck back on there. And this is what causes that deck to rot out. This old grass. This is actually just turned to liquid almost now. You got to clean underneath these things once in a while, or else they fall apart. They rot out. And they end up welding patches in like I, like we have to do. 
Yeah, okay, I'll get the deck out of the way. Oh, that's not light. So that's that. We got a lot more room under there now. We can deal with stuff as we need to. All the parts and spare stuff that was laying on, that fell off there, laying on the floor, they're just random washers and stuff. They're not the washers that we took off. Well, the machine's not new, so I'm sure there's all kinds of random stuff that's going to happen with this thing. And I'm pretty sure that there's a piece in there under, under the pulley. Seems to want, seems to want to wiggle. I haven't come across this particular one type before, so. We'll see. Well, it's definitely the engine turning. I think that's just a, a big nut that holds the pulley to the PTO clutch. I think this should come down. Let's get a small pry bar in there and see if we can get it to move. Small pry bar, big screwdriver. Sometimes they're interchangeable. Okay. Big pry bar. with that I'll get it off and then I'll turn the camera back on and show you guys what it was and how I got it off okay I cheated <laughs> it's not cheating it's the flat rate way I couldn't get the pulley gang pulley off the bottom of the engine properly it just I don't know it wouldn't come off for me so what I did was I on either side, unbolted the exhaust, both sides. I got the brace out from behind the gas tank so the gas tank could move backwards. I shifted the entire engine backwards in the chassis and that got a gap. Let's see if we can see it. It got enough gap here that the belt slides out from underneath the guides. But it didn't have enough slack to pull the, pulley, the belt all the way over the pulleys. So what I did was, let's see if I can get a shot of this. Oh, light. Took the battery out, <clears throat> took better perspective. Took the battery out, put the, took the battery tray out. It just kind of drops in there. Put it in there with a nut driver. And I removed the fan carefully. Do not want to break that. And that will allow me to unhook this belt. And then I'll have enough slack to drop it off the front of the tractor pulley. But I will definitely <clears throat> need two hands to do that. Oh, geez. There we go. That's off. One more pulley to get it off of. I'm trying to do this and see at the same time. Looks like I gotta take. <laughs> it's behind this pulley and it's all guarded I can't get it out so it looks like I'll have to take this nut off I'll drop the pulley out Whoa. sounds like it needs a new one anyways the belt is torn so I will, I'll, I'll be able to get it out but I won't be able to get the new one in Oh, yeah I better find a new one alright anyways that's where we're at Yeah, my camera's been acting up since I dropped you guys on your heads on the floor. The autofocus is flaky and I don't think it's charging the battery anymore so it has to be plugged in all the time. I might have to get a new camera. Alright, <clears throat> back in the stand for you. 
I'm going to pull that nut off, pull the pulley off, and I'll get the belt in there. And then I'll go shopping and see if I can get a new pulley. But I'll check the rest of them too. i got to check all the, all the pulleys to make sure that I'm going to order everything at one time. I know I need this one. I doubt I'll be able to get it by application. I'll have to go by size. It's a V pulley. It'll have a certain diameter, certain bore size, and I should be able to get a, a generic pulley for it. But, again, we're going to go over the deck and make sure that all those idlers are in good shape too. So, I'll get that pulley out, and I'll get the new belt in there, and I'll get the engine bolted back in where it's supposed to be, the exhaust bolted back up, the fuel tank bolted back where it's supposed to be, and carry on. Okay, so with the uh, tractors outside, the engine's all wrapped up, we know that's all set and good to go. And we turn our attention to the deck, you can see that it's got some paint touched up here and here and here. Somebody sprayed silver all over it where it was rusty. Well, there's an issue here with that hole. It's pretty thin there. And this is the lift bracket that lifts it up under the tractor. Now it was all sitting kind of crooked down like this under the tractor because this bracket had actually bent up. So I banged it back down with a hammer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get that set on there and I'll put a tack weld here as well just to help hold that down because it's only really holding here. So I'll put a piece, piece of weld there, a chunk of weld. This side is nice and nice and tight. There's no real rod around it. Well, this is the ugliest part of the tractor. The rest of it actually looks pretty good. The unit part, the part that's outside, actually. So, I think what I'm going to end up doing is painting this. I'll mask off the stickers and I'll that one and that one. I'll take all. I got to check the bearings and everything already. So I, I got to take the belts off and these covers. So you can see this cover is bent. It's supposed to be down and there's a hole here that's supposed to bolt down to the bottom. But anyways, we'll get to that. So I, I still I haven't even looked at the deck yet other than seeing a hole. So I do have some sheet metal, got some nice some thicker stuff. What do we got? You know what I can't even tell you what gauge it is. It's it's thick enough. I'm gonna make a piece out of this to go underneath here. That's nice and large. It's a lot larger than the hole, so my hope is I can get a piece that's much wider than the hole and get some weld around the outside where there is still material other than rust. And this is a thinner piece, but it's going to be a nice size that I can get put on the outside here. We'll get it on there, we'll tack it, and then I'll be able to heat it and bend it down. Just make it look better. The patch and the strength is going to be on the inside. The outside is going to be cosmetic. But anyways, that's the plan. <laughs> Whether it turns out like that or not, I don't know. So I'm going to get uh, get you guys in a stand. Get some stuff rolling. I'm going to start tearing, taking these off anyways. I'll take the covers off. Check, Take the belts off. Check, check the bearings and do all that stuff first. That way I know what I'm into. That way, if I need to, I can order parts, order bearings, whatever I have to get order. And while I'm waiting for those, then I can turn my attention to the little corrosion hole here. Okay, so a couple of things going on here. I did jump ahead. I've got the covers off. Bearing, these bearings are a little noisy. These ones are okay. This one is very tight. It doesn't want to turn very well. This one's noisy. And that one's noisy. So we'll probably just put bearings in them. For the cost of them, I want it to be nice. So, yeah, I got this cleaned up, the ground. That's the hole I'm gonna patch. That's gonna be done from the inside. And this front needed a patch too, so I used my light gauge metal and started a patch. But I just got it tacked in a few spots there. I'll get that welded up. And then we gotta flip it over and scrape the inside. Actually, what I might do is I might weld this. There's a couple of cracks up here. I'll get these welded here on top first, these cracks, and I'll get this piece welded down onto the deck, and then, uh, then we'll flip it over and do the patch work from the inside. All right, so I got our, the front patch welded on. Looks all right. I might not be able to see it. We're dealing with some pretty cruddy material. Then I flipped it over, got it scraped a little, but it was just too dried. So I took it outside and pressure washed the hell out of it. Nice and clean now. A little surface rust is not too bad. 
but we got to fix this. The way I'm going to try and do that is there. So this is a piece of one inch solid round bar. That's the five inch line that I want the width of the patch to be. What's worse going to happen? It won't work. <laughs> so I'm going to heat this up. I might actually lift it up a little bit. So I start the curve a little earlier. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. I don't want to put big dings in it, so I'll get it warm and I'll use my mallet just to persuade it to go over. Well, that's the plan. We'll see. Don't like that, by the way. That's that's too hot to lick. Well, we'll see what happens. Well, we got the new heavy plate tacked in there. A couple of spots. Yeah, the, the angle's not too bad. The curve's okay. And we got it wrapped down a little bit where we want it. We're gonna see what kind of a weld we can get in there. This is pretty rusty. I don't know. It's gonna be splattery, I imagine. But, anyways, welder's on. Welder's hooked up. Let's see. See what happens. It's gonna be a mess. It's not nice clean metal, but we'll give her a shot here. There's some porosity in there because of the rust, but it's going. It's going across. I'm going to continue doing that down the other side, all the way around. I'm just doing little tacks, spot, spot, spot. Flux core is not ideal for that, but that's what I'm going to end up doing. So, I'll come back when it's all beaded in there. I finished up here, started this bead over there, ran out of wire. <laughs> it's Sunday afternoon. I'm not getting wire today. Okay, new roll of wire, got a 10 pound roll, 96 bucks with tax, sure. Anyway, here's what it is, I use flux core, and it's more expensive, it's twice the price. So. Alright, let's weld, maybe, we'll see. That makes an all right bead. All right, let's see what we can do on this side. A little smoky. The reason I'm not doing a solid bead is that it's going to get too much heat in it. I don't want to blow through anything. Because this, the patch is nice and thick, but the metal that I'm welding to is not that thick. So I just don't want to blow through everything. Uh, now we got to flip it over. And make sure I got everything welded I need to weld to. Because I want to make sure that lift bracket is solid to this piece. Okay, so this is what we're looking at on this side. There's where I put my beads of all those tacks a little hole here I'll be able to fill that from the top a little hole here I'll fill from the top but this is a the hole on the top of the deck I'd like to see if I can get some weld in there so what I'll do is I'll tap this down this old sheet metal down I'll tap it to the new patch when I strike the arc I'll, I'll have more of an angle instead of wire like this I'll have the wire more like this and just let it kind of flow onto this 
Otherwise, if I direct the MIG wire directly at this, it'll just blow it apart. It's very, very thin. Let's get that tap down. So I finished going around there, it was a little rough, but we got her done anyways. I'm not sure if the light's going to help or hurt or whatever, but uh, these little beads, I didn't even hit that with a brush yet, but these come up nice and clean. I'm going to paint them anyways, so the whole thing's getting painted, but that's our patchwork. It's uh, solid now. Alright, so I got a perspective. Guys, all right up there? You're like eight feet in the air. <laughs> You're on, on the tripod, it's fully extended on top of the, the lift table so I can work and you can see. So, I want to change these. They're 6203 bearing. I'll have to get them. I don't stock them. 6204 is what standard spindles, most spindles have. Unless it's John Deere, then they got their own fancy, funky number. This pulley, we're going to save it. This one here, I want to replace it, but that's our tensioning arm, it's spring loaded here. Let's get the spring off of there. Typically what they have here is a shouldered bolt, where the bolt goes through this, this arm where it pivots. The shoulder fills the pivot so it doesn't slop like this, and then it bottoms out on the deck when you tighten it all together, the shoulder is long enough that you can bottom tighten the bolt up and it doesn't bind this up. If this is sloppy here, I don't like it. <laughs> this isn't normal. Somebody's stuck a bolt in here. Bolt with a nylock nut. So I'm going to try and figure out a way to make that not like that because I, I don't like it. So I want to make it right and then we'll, we'll get underneath here, clean it, lubricate it, make sure all that's all good. These bearings here I got to order. I already said that. I'm repeating myself now. But anyways, let's start by, we'll take these nuts off. I've already got the blades all off. This turned out nice. I got rid of some of my splatter on that welding. So that's, but that's common with flux core welding. It, it, it splatters. It doesn't matter. It's going to get full paint job and clean the ground up anyways. So it's, all it is is you got to do a little more cleanup when you use flux. So we'll take our tension spring, put it for safekeeping, way over there, and we'll start taking these off. I wonder if my little 3 8 gun will take them off. They should be uh, 11 sixteenths, or sorry, 15 sixteenths. Oh, look at that. Almost like somebody's done that before. But because there's no blade on it, I'm not sure if I'll be able to hold the jack shafts from spinning. We'll see. I always get the big gun out, big air gun. Well, took a little effort, but it came off. Of course, the gun isn't fully charged either. Just enough. Oh, easy. So these should be splined on there. They are. So I, I don't know if you can see because I can't see what I'm what you're looking at. But these are splined, notched in there, and they mesh into the jack shafts. Yeah, I don't like the sound of those bearings, and they look like. Get a shop right here and whip that off. It should be a 6204. Should be, and I stock lots of those. Yep, 6204. Perfect. Nice. These ones are 
The ones in the bottom, most of the time they're 6204s. But I've seen where the top one's top one's smaller than the bottom one. The bottom one being meaning where the blade is. So we got that off. That one off. That one's off. So I've seen these jammed on there crooked and wrong and that's not a good thing. Pulleys don't have a lot of wear in them. Wear in a pulley you would see there'd be a groove worn in here. These ones actually look okay. Those are off to the side. So in theory, I should be able to whack these jack shafts and drop them out of the spindle. In theory. I'll try a rubber mallet first. See what happens. Ha! Wow. That one out easy. That one came right out with the lower bearing on it and the spacer. Nice. Perfect. And that is, well, it looks just like a 6204 as well. Should have probably a dozen in stock. That's what I normally have, 10 or 12 in stock. 6204. We're in business. We have all the bearings we need for the for the spindles. Might need to get a punch to drive the wrap and the rest of the way out. Yeah. Something's always got to give you a struggle. Ooh, it out. Throwing parts all over now. Okay, punch time. Oh, come on now. There's something here. This is just a little steel steel rod. That one's out. That one's out. No bearing. It stayed in the spindle. No bearing. It stayed in the spindle. And that bearing came out with the jack shaft. Yeah, okay. Get these out of the way because I'm going to clean these up, get the rust off of them, and I'll put any C's on them before I put it all back together. So the next time they come apart, it'll be easier to get them out of the bearings again. If there's any rope or twine or anything stuck around these things, always get them off, clean them up. You want to make sure that everything is sitting flat on there. Also this area here, this is this shield is supposed to guard the the seal from dirt and debris. We'll just dig all that crap out of there and make sure they're clean. Yeah, jack shafts are in good shape, so I'm happy about that. I think I'm not sure if you can see. Let me get to the other side there. I'll check the monitor part of the camera see if you can see what I'm seeing. Oh yeah, yeah, you can see. Nice. <laughs> and you haven't fallen off the table yet. So this still got top bottom bearing and it's spacer. You may be able to see it moving around in there. This one also has both bearings and a spacer. Bunch of twine tied around the bottom here. That will overheat a bearing real quick. This is a baling twine. It's orange nylon. That'll overheat and cook a bearing. Seen it many times before. This is the most uh, most repairs I've had to do on a deck. I don't usually get into patching them. I, for the amount of tractors you've seen on the channel, I'm actually kind of picky about them. I don't want to typically do patchwork and everything on decks, but. It's the first, and it's a it's a nice tractor. The rest of the tractor is in really really good condition, so it was worth spending a little more time on this one. I'm gonna try knock that bearing out. I'm not sure. If, yeah, this should come off the top. Let's see what I can do here. 
I'm going to put this socket on a short two inch extension and see if I can drive the bearing out from the underside. Yeah, there it is. One. <laughs> These I'm going to drive the bottom. I'll drive the bottom bearings out first using a a big drift. I'll push on the spacer. I'll show you what the spacer looks like here in a second. Here we go. This is the jack shaft to come out of here. The bearing we just popped out the top would sit here, and then there's the spacer, and then there's the lower bearing. So what I'll do is this spacer is still in here. I'll put it off to the side. And it'll use a drift to hit the side of the spacer, like so, side of it, to push the bottom bearing out. It'll work, in theory. In practice is another question. Let's see what we got for a drift. Perfect. This is actually a drive pin out of a... Seven and five eighths General Motors rear axle, probably either Camaro, S10, or Astro van. <laughs> Had it for years. Changed quite a few of them too over the years. All right, let's shove that thing out of there. bearings out and it's spacer a lot of bearing and spacers out this deck is coming apart really nice we're twine tied around these bearings that one's crunchy that one's crunchy that one's not crunchy but it's dry, noisy. I'll reach underneath there with our socket again, drive the top bearings out, not a whole lot of swing under there with a hammer. Moving, can you see it? It is moving. Easy peasy. If you've got a little bit of mechanical knowledge, you can save yourself a lot of money by changing bearings in your spindles because these spindles can retail anywhere from $55 to $105, $115. Mind you, it is complete, but if the quill is good, the jack shaft is good, if you have all these parts that are still in good shape and the only thing wrong with them is that they're noisy, especially these splines, that's important. If they're just noisy, just if you can, just put bearings in them. Bearings are a few bucks a piece. This one here, I beat with a socket, but it shows sign of melting from the twine that was stuck around it. Okay. All of our bearings are out. This one's still stuck on the spindle shaft, so I'm gonna have to tap that little guy out. Might need a little penetrating oil on it. Just down the side here. Got some. Let that sit and soak for a minute. Grab some bearings out of the cover here. Two, four, six, eight. I got nine in stock. We need six. Three. And six. That 
will show you one side of one bearing on camera because I've gone over this on just about every single lawn tractor deck video that I've done. I don't want to just take up time on a video just for the sake of taking up time. I'll show you one side what I do here. Brand new bearings, even though they're sealed both sides, that was that's what the two RS means on the on the new bearings. Even though they're sealed with a basically a seal on both sides, they are permanent lubed for life, greased. I just take a sharp little pick when they're real gentle so we don't wreck the seal and pop one side out. Hopefully it'll focus on it for us. There is grease in there, but not enough, in my opinion. So what I do is I just take some good quality grease, any good quality grease, nothing specific. And I'll fill that up. Fill that cavity, pretty decent. If there's room for grease, fill it up. And then carefully just put that seal back in its place. It should basically like click in there sit flush. Perfect. So that's the one side. I'm going to do both sides of all six bearings that we need to replace off camera and we'll come back on when that's done. All right, you guys still doing up okay up there? Angle's still good and I can see what you're seeing. So we're going to do one and on camera and then I'll do the rest off camera. So where we're at Jack shaft has been cleaned. A little of the sandpaper there. I took all my bearings have been packed both sides with grease now. So I just took a new bearing and made sure that it fit nice and gently over the, all the way to the bottoms out on the shaft. Okay, that's good. Perfect. I did that with the three jack shafts, so they're all in this condition right now. We're gonna take one of these dust shields, put her over. Well, first, let's get we're gonna just slather up some some anti season there. Nickel or copper, whatever, it doesn't matter. Whatever you got will work. That'll work. Grease would work too. I got anti seize, we'll use it. Grease is a lot cheaper than anti seize, by the way. <laughs> so there's anti seize on there now. I've dug all the crud out of the base of these. We'll put that on there first. Take a new bearing. Put her down on top. Should get it to bottom out in that sleeve. There we go, it's bottomed out. Put it up through the bottom of the spindle. And we're gonna hold it. You know what, I should have done one of the side ones to give me more room. We're gonna hold it in the center, try and keep it centered in the spindle. Just tap it in from the bottom. Yeah, I should have done it from the bottom. Other one. Just because I can't get, get a good whack on it here. A little more room maybe. Now I can't hit it. <laughs> no. Just can't get a good angle on it now. Well, that's going in. Let me just tilt this. There we go. I'm, not, I'm hoping you got all that on camera. But anyways, I just beat it in from the bottom. So that's fine. We'll put our spacer on. Another one of these greased bearings. What I'm going to do is find a socket to fit on the outside race. I don't want to hit the inside, I want to hit the outside. I, want to, I don't want to put any pressure on the balls if I don't have to. I'm just going to find a socket here. That's not it. This one will do it. It's, uh, I don't know, 36. It shouldn't be under much tension. Basically, it just drops in. Well, that's nice. Spins nice, sounds nice and smooth. I'll 
put one of our pulleys back on it and when we ram that nut down it'll pull the shaft together centering the bearings and compressing that center spacer that center spacer is what actually takes all the pressure I'll tighten that later with another gun with a bigger gun but there we go nice and quiet all right, back to this angle, or still on this angle. All the spindles are done, the bearings are done. Nice and tight, snug, no play, no noise. Okay, there's where we're at. What I figured out with this is, this is a really noisy one. It does have a 6203 bearing in it. We get a little conical washer but it is encapsulated both sides. The plastic's molded around that bearing. I can't change just the bearing. So I will source out a pulley. We'll go by the diameter. We'll go by the offset here because you can see that, well, I don't know if you can see in the light. On this side, there's, a, there's an offset. If they don't come like this, I may be able to drive that center spacer out, but we'll burn that bridge when I get to it. If I can't find this exact one, either metal or plastic, I don't care, either one, then I'll have to go another, a little more extreme on my repair. So I've already taken this, this is our tensioning lever. This bracket here is actually got a, a band in it, so it needs to be straightened out. I'm gonna take it off anyways. And this slot, I was explaining a shouldered bolt before, earlier. Somebody's already tried to repair this. There's a, looks like a brass spacer. Somebody has ground down and put in here but the the positioning of these washers was the downfall these washers allow the spacer to pass through it so that's no good you need a washer on top that won't allow the spacer to pass through it so there's the big hole we've got here should be able to drive this in there if not I'll adjust it a little more to make it fit Maybe it was flipped over. Oh, there we go. That'll, that'll work. I can use it. It'll work. It fits. I'm gonna, there's a slight bend in this bracket. I'm going to straighten it out. I'll use this. But if I put the big washer on there, there was actually two of them stacked up. What happens is it allows that spacer to come out of the arm. Well, that's no good. What you need is a washer that will cover the spacer like this. Like that. You don't want the spacer to be able to come out of the arm. By bolting it down, the space will go directly onto the deck here. It'll sandwich this brass spacer between this washer and the deck. And that's all you need. You don't need any of these other big washers. Not required. So let me beat on this for a second. We'll straighten her out. Without losing a spacer, I want to make another one. One second off camera here. That was all it took. The arm is nice and straight now. Before I put that back in. You know what? I, I'm going to test fit it. Just, just for you guys. Just for you guys. I'll test fit it, make sure it all works good together and plays nice. Because I gotta, I'm going to take it off again to paint the deck. So we'll put that back in. We'll put our washer, the appropriate size washer on there. I see what it is. This bolt is too long. It's just a 3 8 bolt. It's got too much shoulder here. The nut won't tighten down on it. We'll just get a shorter bolt out of stock here. <clears throat> Do I need stainless, guys? Stainless? Ah, hell, let's put a stainless one in it. I got it. Let's use it. <laughs> it's an upgrade. 3 8 bolt. Washer. Nylock nut. Now, I should be able to jam this tight, and this will still pivot. 
but it should, it's going to pivot on the bracket on that little spacer, which is not quite 100% perfect, but we'll see. Let's see. That's tight. Look at that, pivots. A little bit of lube, that'll be perfect. Doesn't flex up and down, pivots nice, it's not going to lift off. That's beautiful. That's a thing of beauty right there. That's going to work much better. Figured it out. Figured it out. These bearings I don't have, I got to order them. Yeah. And I got to get some paint. So off camera, because it's boring, I'm going to strip the deck. I'll leave the uh, leave all the pulleys and everything on, but I might actually just, from underneath, there's four bolts here that hold the spindles on. If I just whip those bolts out, I can take all the complete assemblies out. I'll take this off. I'll take the whole arm off. Uh, no, I won't. I'm going to take just the pulley off. That way I can paint the arm. Parts come in. There we go. That is that. Then we can flip it over. Do our. I'll do the sharpen and balance the blades off camera, and we can figure out what we need to do from there. All right. So this will be the last segment for this video. It uh, <clears throat> this part two is dragged on. Probably cl it's close to an hour now. Anyways, we've got the deck mounted. I uh, leveled the leveled it. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's early in the morning here. I'm still half asleep. I use my deck leveling tool. Actually, kind of neat. Slide that under, and you push this down until it touches the blade, and then you can read it here. You can read it on the other side. You ideally you want the front edge, the leading edge of your blade, to be a little bit lower than the back. Anyways, it lifts and holds level now. Now that the re we've repaired this piece, that uh, was rotted out. The anti-scrub wheels are the same height left and right now. It's going to be a bit of an optical illusion because this side of the deck is much thinner than the other side, but you can see we've got you know, about three quarters of an inch gap to that scrub wheel. And we got about the same way down there, but uh, the deck is nice and level now. It's a little dirty, been sitting outside. It's uh, fall time now not time to sell tractors so we're just gonna park this one in the yard it's gonna get a nice wash and a scrub in the spring and go up for sale unfortunately you won't see me running and cutting grass with it because the belt that I bought <laughs> it's the wrong one <laughs> I don't have one in stock right now I'll have to order one I need a 5 8 by 60 so I'll pick one up and throw it on there in the spring anyways we're gonna close this video out tractor runs great everything is golden with it thanks for joining me guys don't forget to uh, like comment subscribe give me a thumbs up I like thumbs up leave me a comment also I'm looking for your opinion 
I can tell by the analytics that people are skipping through my videos because they are pretty long. If you would rather have more multi-part videos, like this could have been a four-part four part video. If that's more preferred, let me know in the comments. I need your feedback. Till the next video, guys. Take care.